What's up, powerful people? My name is Eli, you can call me Super Kid, and I am here to welcome you to part 15 of Disco Elysium here on Super Kid Plays. Powerful people, if you're excited for today's episode, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, leave any comments you have for me in the comment section, and please share this video with anybody you think might like it. As you recall, powerful people, if you saw the last episode, this guy, Roy, sold our gun that we pawned to somebody calling themselves a pig who claimed to be a police officer. Seems unlikely that that's exactly what happened, but that is the information we have. I suspect that the person is Cindy the Skull because she called us pigs a bunch of times. So that's who I'm going to check with. We're just going to look around here real quick. Tire tracks leading onto the roof. The slush and rain has almost washed them off. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Um. Oh, what's that? Life! It doesn't need to be a struggle. He covers his mouth to hide a burp. Oh, I'll be with you in a moment, officer. Let me just finish my sandwich. Talk to Angry Old Rene first. <laughs> I'll talk to angry old Renee. Have you no shame whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape? <laughs> what the hell? Uh... Renee, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? This one's... Still chewing on his sandwich. Good lord. Look, look, in his hand, going to his mouth, the sandwich. It's hauntingly beautiful. I am trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now, stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. <laughs> what the fuck? These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. Uh, Alright, I got this. Ball time. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're way past their prime. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, ooh. I have a 97% chance. Grab the ball and show them how it's done. Is it going to work? Success. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter. You'll make it work. God, this is right. You feel the familiar tremble of excitement and adrenaline that precedes every victory. Time has frozen. Feel the ball. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it, probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already your muscles are adjusting to the weight, the nervous system calibrating until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man ball is ready. Take in the surroundings. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind, everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. There is time for a last glance inward. Who am I? An embodiment of pure motion, a fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency. Ooh, I like that. Behold, the fear and confusion reflecting in the eyes of the two feeble geezers. They are in awe of your superiority. You are a god to them. The inertia can be contained no more than a bullet leaving a gun. Let go. Be the bullet. Damn, that was quite a... That was like a Dewey Cox level thought. It's to... Think about his entire life. Merde, the old soldier yells in outrage. Bordel de merde. All French pronunciations. Completely fabricated. What the hell is your problem? <laughs> not a weak right tricep, that's for sure. I don't care if you're a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. 
It's so goddamn disrespectful. A man his age getting worked up like that? Better watch that blood pressure. I'm sensing anger and I don't understand why. He vandalized our game, son. He tries to calm himself. We can't play petanque with five bulls. I don't know what petanque means. It sounds like five. But I guess not. Uh, sorry, an, sorry, an honest mistake. Are we good? Oh, yeah, let's say that. I thought it was shot put. Well, it damn well isn't. It's petanque. All French is made up. The, well, all French pronunciations in these play videos are made up. So it's all French, but let's not get into that. The man snaps, raising his voice again. You ruined a petanque game. We want our bowl back. How am I going to get it back? I can't go in the water. Unless I had a boat. Take it easier, Rene. Rene. This is Gaston. I like that. Rene Arnaud and Gaston Martin. Or Martin, I don't know. The Jolly One tries to defuse the situation. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. Of course there's harm done, you orange slug. The heel of his cavalry boot slams in the ground. You owe us a goddamn bull. Okay, I will try to fix this. Good. He nods. Mistakes are forgiven. When men at least try to right their wrongs. I believe you will try. Now, why did you approach us? Rene, I found your guard booth. Do you know anything about the man hanging in the backyard of the whirling in rags? You seem to be playing in a crater. I saw the statue of Philippe the Third near the roundabout. Hmm. Let's do the guard booth one first. Yes, the Debardieros Union pays me to stand vigil during the nights. He looks or he looks down, not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and money is tight. He adds with a slight sigh. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. I saw a picture in there. You were in it. Who's the girl? You must have you must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does. He nods. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. So who was working your shift that night? No one. The booth has been unmanned since last Monday. He looks suddenly very old and tired. There's no other guard. It's just me. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday? Yes, he nods, before hesitantly continuing. It's it's not actually an issue. I, I mean... Look, officers, his partner jumps in. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before Rene. Mr. Clare had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. Mostly decorative? The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals, he tries to argue. Ooh, some experience. Nice. Everett created this job for Rene. Rene. <laughs> um, because he knows the Royal Carabiners, Carabiners pension of honor and PTSD pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated kingsman collecting tear reflects bad on the whole neighborhood his words um let's see whoa there's a lot of stuff to read down here uh everard gets it big guys looking after the small and everyone working together i love it such dependency only weakens a man further do or die there's no middle ground renee is but one man we need a program get all the elderly back into the job market keep folks motivated Rene should rent out his services, invest the profit, get a few more guys, expand and repeat. Wage work is a dead end. Wage work is a dead end. There's absolutely nothing wrong with tear collecting. <laughs> it's my side thing too. Uh, yeah, proudly hold out the tear bag. I didn't mean to imply there's something wrong with that. The jolly man says quickly, "I do it too. Everyone does it. It's an excellent side thing." Yes, yes, yes. The carabineer utters angrily. Can we conclude the topic of my guard booth now? I saw a picture in there. You were in it. Who's the girl? 
His features stiffen and he look he gets a cold look. She is nobody. This is none of your concern, and I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. Damn. Ten experience for that secret task. The lady is Jeanne Marie Beaulieu. All French pronunciations are fabricated. Uh, Gaston speaks with a soft voice. And she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Got it. Thanks. Yes, yes, like I said, he brings it up again. I would be I would be up anyway, so might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. I feel you on that. Sort of like uh Martin Crane on Fraser. He takes the security job later in life. Uh do you know anything about the man hanged in the backyard of the whirling and rags, even though you weren't there? Unfortunately, I don't, he shrugs. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement, but this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? In Martinez, the union is the law, so you can re so can you really blame them? But you don't have a problem with the cops. Cop is a, is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the efforts to bring order to our streets. So again, you don't know anything. If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply don't. I am an old man, not a coward. The daily business of the riffraff no longer concerns me. You seem to be playing in a crater. Yes, the man nods. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Do you know what created it? I do. He nods, straightening his back. Fire from heavy artillery. Heavy artillery fire, you say? That's the best kind of artillery fire. Very interesting. Okay, it's a crater left by artillery fire, but why? Why what? Why was the heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communards hijack your country, ex execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Did you use artillery fire against them? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly, we got licked. He adds, squeezing a bull in his fist. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We, had, we didn't, though. We lacked calibre. And we lack calibrate. I don't know if that's how you say that. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannons simply weren't big enough. Um. Hmm. They should have chosen a place away from the people in buildings. This place is the damn beachhead, son. He says, pointing at pointing to the bay. They had to soften the commies up first. The beachhead. Yes, he nods, inspecting you with some disdain. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachol. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachol during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Marie's and the Delta. He points to the northeast. Um, shake your head and look down at the crater. This here is blood ground, where Coalition Boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabid dogs out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Need a little water there. Clean those rabid dogs out. Most likely, he says looking down at the soil, we're playing petank on their mangled corpses. Jesus Christ, man. Blood ground. The other one shakes his head. You got old Rene going there. He is like he isn't angry enough already. Uh, ah, that explains all the war damage. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. There is a strange gleam in his eyes. He approves of this radical approach. Knows it was necessary. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. A dark shadow runs across his face. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. 
Well, it's your own damn fault, the Jolly Man remarks. You, we, the coalition, Revishol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course, they still hold influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... He stops mid-sentence and turns, and turns to you. What do you think? That's how it should be. Soft socialists paving the way for hard working class to take over. Foreign power has cleaned up your... Cleaned up our mess, and now the rule, they rule us. This coalition seems quite capable, actually. Commies just don't understand how money works. Um... Let's say number one. That's how it should be. Soft socialists paving the way for the hard working class to take over. Preposterous. Surely you don't mean it. He frowns. I'm just sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those commie hyenas, boiling cats for food, drinking my piss in the mountains, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachol, or even if that damn clown Friz Frizzle <laughs> had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. Instead, all that is just holy and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with tooth toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. He sighs. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the rule of the suzerain with. Who was this frizzle? Damn frizzle. He was the king we couldn't protect. The carabineers failed him and the crown. The old veterans fell silent and, and messages... The old veteran falls silent and massages his chest. He died in the hands of the hoi polloi in a very public execution. He slouches as he says that. It makes him smaller, admitting they left the king to the mob. You mentioned Guillaume. A true king in both blood and mind. Led Revachol before Frizzle. He could have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. Hmm, what exactly is a suzerain? The suzerain is the king. Has everybody, has everyone forgotten already? He then slowly nods and says to himself, they must have forgotten, they've forgotten already. <laughs> Five more experience, nice. It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the filth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Um... Hmm. I saw the statue of Philippe the Third near the roundabout. Ah yes, King Philippe the Third on his steed, a reminder of what Revachol once was. Oh absolutely, he smiles as if relieving or reliving a pleasant memory. At the mercy of a cocaine snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. Cocaine? Cocaine? Sounds like our kind of king. And just imagine what kind of cocaine a king would have had. <laughs> yeah, I'm imagining it. A superpower feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. What was that about cocaine? Oh, old Philippe was a big fan of the purple nose candy the nobility loves so much. A cocaine connoisseur of sorts, he chuckles. His egocentricity is borderline legendary. You can't even take responsibility for yourself. How could you fathom the responsibility weighing on the shoulders of a ruler? He asks, obviously annoyed. That's why the Philippian kings used cocaine, for clarity of vision, to aid in their work. <laughs> Regnum cocainum, Revachol's finest years. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. He seems to grow taller, brimming with pride about the past. I'm satisfied with this explanation. Of course, the lieutenant marked Marks dryly. Clarity of vision. Awareness. Philippe III was even brought into this world with the help of cocaine. The court, med the court medic administered a dose to his mother when she was in labor. And it is well known that with the help of cocaine, only the purest, of course, he was able to connect with the higher realms. Such responsibility requires a boost every now and then. I sometimes need one too. Seems like irresponsible behavior for a monarch. Drug users shouldn't even operate heavy machinery, <laughs> much less rural countries. Thanks for clearing that up. Um, uh, 
I sometimes need one too. Please, officer, don't encourage him. He quickly turns to Renee. Do spare us the cocaine fairy tales. The RCM isn't interested in them. Yes, indeed. We are not here to investigate the drug trade of centuries past. How should a true king rule? Decisively, without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. Seems to me a ruler should take care of his people before himself. Um, yeah. A nation is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try to... Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. There is some weariness in his voice now. He He's heard this rant many times before. The carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. Let's talk about something else. Right. The old man stands tall and proud, looking at you inquisitively. Um... Let's thank him for his time and see if we can raise our composure real quick. Um, plus composure. Plus composure. Um... Sorry, just checking, just making double sure. All right. We can't. <laughs> um, let's smoke a cigarette, see if that helps. I don't know if it will. All right, now let's talk to him again. We're still waiting for a replacement for the bull you sent sinking. Yeah, I, I know. Um... It didn't help, but let's try this out. Oh, hell yes. As Rene turns from you to his partner and back, the metals on his chest rattle and glare. He keeps his spine straight and his rib cage lifted, displaying them proudly. How many metals are there? Two. The larger one is shaped like a cross, while the smaller metal resembles the sun. Look at the cross. A crowned head in front of two crossed rifles. The metal hangs from a blue striped triangle. Look at the sun. A small blue star inside an orange sun. It has the word Valiance written on it. Written below. The medals point to his chest. Did you get them for... For bravery, he interjects. That's what I was going to say, bravery. I'm sure. But I know this uniform's reputation. You're also wondering if I got these for raping women or killing babies. So, did you? Honor is everything to me, he says with a fir with grim finality. Whoa, sounds like you're about to open the gates of conversation. This man will literally take your ear off if you let him. If you let him wander down memory lane, sorry. <laughs> sounds like there's a story there, but I'd like to get, I'd like to talk about something else right now. Didn't think you had the stomach for it, he nods grimly. Kids these days. I'm used to that. We only have a minute left. Maybe we should look around a little bit. I didn't even get to go see Cindy the Skull. I don't have time for that at all. Enormous bulls worthy of a real man. That's hilarious. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. The lieutenant looks down the street. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. You can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant, when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. Okay. Some great tectonic force has cracked the pigment like an eggshell. The damage looks like it could have been caused by an earthquake. That is true. It does. We got about 20 seconds left. This is this post laventure laventurier. I don't know. All French pronunciations, of course, are made up. Mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. A faint sticker on the side notes, or the side reads RCM Emergencies Desk Number 8102 with a slogan Mankind Be Vigilant. 
Good mail delivery box. <laughs> that's awesome. The box seems happy. Well, that's good. Eat shit, pig. Fucked by the cun and Sanji with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and base set mailbox also. Uh, <laughs> Mail collection box, you should man the fuck up. The mailbox does not know how to man up. It is an inanimate object. All right. Well, powerful people, <laughs> that was quite an ending. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, uh, leave any comments you have for me in the comment section, and please share this video with anybody you think might like it. Those things are very helpful. Uh, next time, I will continue trying to make my way over to Cindy the Skull. No promises, though. Uh, but until then, powerful people, my name is Eli. You can call me Super Kid. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Peace and love.